Hello and welcome back to the Eagle Griffin Games Vlog, where we share news on upcoming Kickstarters, look back at past campaigns, sneak peeks at upcoming projects, interviews with game designers and artists, and more. We'll wrap up this vlog with a game giveaway, but first, let's take a look at what's new. The Railways of the World Expansions Kickstarter campaign launched today and features three new expansions to the Railways of the World series as well as the Transcontinental Playmat. Each of those new expansions adds something new to the Railways of the World series. Railways of Sweden is a new 2-5 player map featuring heavy mountainous terrain, ferry lines, and an assortment of new railroad operation cards. Designed by Ola Nygards, this new expansion map comes with snow track tiles as well as new 50 and 100 point victory tokens to help track scores that loop around the score track. Railways of Australia is a new 2-6 player map featuring a new terrain type of towns that can be built into new grey cities. Another new mechanic are region borders, which represent the break of gauge in rail lines that often plagued Australian rail lines. These region borders block track expansions as players must cross the borders by connecting through cities or use of a new triple gauge operation card. Railways of Australia also includes new switch track tiles, which display two rail lines coming together. These can be used with the switch track mini expansion. Rail Barons of the World adds solo play to the Railways of the World series, as well as a new Universal Rail Baron deck that can be used with any map. The solo system was designed by John Albertson and David Tertsey, and works with seven of the Railways of the World maps. The Universal Rail Baron deck features Rail Barons with non-map specific goals so that they can be used with any map adding new goals to play with previous expansions. The Kickstarter campaign will run from today, May 13th, until May 28th, and a link to the campaign can be found in the description below. David Tertsey has become a prolific game designer, but has also become well known for his solo designs and collaborations. He has designed, or co-designed, Anachrony, Dice Settlers, and Roam and Roll, as well as the solo mode for Kanban EV. Well, welcome in, David Tertsey. Um, it all started with uh, an acronym many, many years ago. Uh, the, we needed more stretch goals, and uh, I have recently played uh, Morton Monod Peterson's Automa for uh, Tuscany Viticulture, and I told myself, hey, I can have a crack at this too. And uh, I like the simplicity of how I don't have to think what's worst for me, make decisions against myself, but I wanted to simulate the feeling I get from a two-player game a little bit more. And, and I wanted the state of my opponent to be relevant and, and, and uh, to its next move and, and predictable what it would do in a way that I would be able to roughly guess what action a human player would do. And because Anachrony enjoyed great success, uh, I was given many, many more opportunities over the years with all sorts of publishers. And I guess practice made perfect and uh, the more and more games and the more and more systems I applied to what sort of interaction do I want the uh, players to uh, feel when facing their opponent head-on is uh, something that has been missing from most solo approaches and that allowed me to hone my craft and uh, work with uh, more and more wonderful uh, testers, developers and other solo designers uh, so that today it's it's almost like a professional team effort to analyze a game and come up with a solo mode for it. I was visiting uh, Randall and uh, Eagle Griffin in uh, Phoenix just before Covid and the dark times hit. Uh, for a completely unrelated project and while I was there Randall said well there's one game I would really like you to try and and he uh, took me out for some nice good American food and uh, while we were waiting he pulled out Railways of the Nippon from uh, uh, his bag and said so have you played any train games 
And I was like, well, I've been staring at my copy of Age of Steam for a while, uh, but show me what you got. And we played one game there waiting for the food and then another game uh, back at where we were staying. And uh, the game clicked. It, it, it was... I understood what I was doing. Obviously, I lost both times, but, but I understood the choices. I was uh, impatiently uh, worrying what he would do against me. And I was like, all right, I, I see what you're doing. You're trying to provoke me into applying my uh, my uh, interaction focused uh, uh, approach to making a solo mode for this. Because, you know, train games uh, very rarely have solo modes, uh, especially not, uh, you know, economy focused, uh, uh, proper network building big train games. Uh, and he said, well, yes, the thought has crossed my mind. Show me what you got. No rush whenever you have an idea. I think it was the next day when uh, he had to run into the office and uh, I was like, all right, I'll just entertain myself at home and and uh, we can continue when you get back. And he was gone a little bit longer and I was just sitting there staring at the packed up box of uh, the railways from the day before and I was like, why not do it now? So I opened the box, I took out a, a piece of paper and I jotted down the notes of what level of maximum complexity I want to deal with in a bot uh, uh, in this game. It was obvious it needed to build links to make the map <laughs> more competitive. It needed to occasionally uh, deliver cubes to make it harder for me to pick where to pick the cubes from. And the rest is all about the money pressure and the can I get enough money to build more to score enough points before the end game runs out. And I showed the game to him like, I don't know, two or three hours later and, and, and he played a couple of rounds and he said, okay, this could work. And when I got home the week after, I called my trusted right hand man, John Albertson, who has been the um, lead solo developer for uh, Anachrony. He famously played the Chronosus over a hundred times. Uh, he was one of the team members on Kanban EV as well. And now he's my uh, solo co-designer on uh, the solo mode for Perseverance Castaway Chronicles. And I told him, have you ever wondered about train games? And he said, I'm listening. And uh, after catching him up on, 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 on the itty bitty great uh, details, then uh, he sat down and said, all right, let's do this. And after a couple of testing, a couple of uh, streamlining, it appeared that the system is working for Nippon. And then uh, we set out, well, mostly he set out. I just provided him with a ton of notes and occasional crazy ideas on how to adapt it to the other maps to preserve the characteristic and the unique aspect of uh, each map that uh, brings to the multiplayer game of Railways. Uh, we wanted to give it back uh, to the solo players as well. So here we are almost a year later, uh, or possibly more, uh, and now we have half a dozen or more, I don't even know, uh, Railways map uh, uniquely uh, solo playable against the Automa that I created on that fateful afternoon and John has been uh, laboriously playtesting it ever since. We think a game is great for various reasons. I myself count myself a heavy Euro strategy gamer. I want to make a plan. I want to um, feel thrilled and intellectually worried during it, but I also want to do it while not being bored when my opponent is taking their turn, which means I want to care about what they're doing, I want to understand their plans, I want to be able to influence it, I want to be worrying that they might influence mine, meanwhile do it in a non-negative way, not, not you know, stand under a uh, rain of slaps, but, but uh, uh, calculate cost and benefit of should I be building my own or making it harder for them to build theirs. I am fundamentally and uh, first and foremost not a solo player. I, For me everything is about talking to people and making them understand what I'm thinking and making me understand what they are thinking. Therefore when I play solo I start to talk to the cards 
and 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 everything goes horribly from there. But I figured there must be people out there who want and like to play solo, but they don't like how it is a lesser experience than a good two or three or more player uh, interactive economic hero. And I said to myself, initially not this on purpose, initially it was more like a trial and error through my earlier attempts that the first Anachrony bot or the Petricor bot uh, or Die Settlers bot, but then then it evolved, then, then, then I saw from feedback what worked, what didn't, and I figured that the first thing that makes a solo play great is by not being worse than the multiplayer game. And of course this means the multiplayer game needs to be really good, but luckily there are many many great designers out there uh, and occasionally I manage to pull a game through as well that that provides that great multiplayer experience and uh, and, and lets me strategize and, and feel excited and feel accomplished while caring about what's on the other side of the table. And the trick is to figure out the right balance of how much to abstract out so that I don't actually have to play a full game for my opponent, for my solo opponent, but just enough so that I care and just enough that I can influence. Um, and lately, the second thing that I've been adding more and more, uh, mostly on popular request, is simplicity and how can I simulate more and more with less and less. And I think Railways is a very quintessential example of this because you take three actions each round, you only have to deal with one card between the second and the third action, and yet the impact of it matters to you as much as any player's uh, three actions would. You can influence it with the insurance mechanism, you can predict what it's gonna do, so even if you don't want to insure, you can just see that it's about to build on a particular area of the map and you go and build there yourself. Um, and it creates a constant pressure which makes you strive to do better, just like trying to outplay a human opponent would and does so while being extremely simple, flip a card, do the one thing written on it, rinse, repeat, and that is what I think is the uh, singular focus that enables great solo play of any game, in this case, Railways of the World and Railways of Nippon. <laughs> This 67 inch by 38 inch playmat combines railways of the world's eastern US and western US for the transcontinental variant of railways of the world and it's now available from our website. Additionally, it's also part of the current railways of the world expansions kickstarter campaign running right now. In Goldbrow, you're trying to be the cleverest businessman because over three weeks, you're going to be trying to acquire lucrative shares in the brewery and beer gardens businesses and with these earn as much money as possible. Because these four breweries are going to be supplying different beer gardens beer and they're going to be supplying them to customers that will grow as the game goes on and you're trying to find the right time to have the right shares in the right places to make the most money. Each week has seven days and each day players will simultaneously secretly select an action then reveal and then players will take actions. Like the red player might want to expand this beer garden because he's the boss of it and has a share in it. Now making that beer garden two spots instead of just one for more customers. Because at the end of the week when things pay out the larger the beer garden well the more money it will make. Or a player might want to become the boss of one of the businesses, the beer garden, or the brewery. In this case, the beer garden, there's no boss here, they can be it pretty easily. And since there's only one boss per business, another player might try to overtake the boss that's there. But with clever play and adding shares, they can block that by having enough to not let that happen. Players might try to get shares in beer gardens or breweries, or maybe off the top. Getting that player a share in that specific beer garden or brewery. Players will continue taking actions for the total of seven days, then payout happens at the end of the week, depending on how large your beer garden's customers are. Two spaces or four. The larger, the more money. 
and your actions will be decided by how many shares you own in each of these because not only will this make money, but they'll also pay out the brewery half of that that supplies it. And those breweries are also businesses where there's a boss and players can own shares in. And through card play, if you're able to move the pretty waitress, well, you'll make more money in that spot. But the beer garden with the drunken bum, well, you'll make less money. No one wants to drink next to him. The game is played over three full weeks, essentially rounds, and whoever has the most money at the end from being the smartest investor and the most savvy and cutthroat businessman will be the winner. Gold Brow is for three to four players. For ages 10 and up, takes one hour to play and is available now. So click the link below to be brought to the product page. I just gave you a quick overview of Gold Brow. And we're going to give away one copy today. Now to enter, all you have to do is be a subscriber of our channel and then make a comment. And if you aren't yet a subscriber, you can click the subscribe just below me. Once a subscriber, for your comment for today's giveaway, let us know your favorite beverage of choice. Now you have from one week for when this video was launched to enter. Now I hope you've enjoyed this week's Eagle Griffin Games vlog, and you can click the link below me that is a playlist of all the past vlogs, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.